Do angels really exist? Have you ever met an angel? Do angels walk among us? Angels, they're so central to so many religions. They show up in art, they show up in television and in movies, they're in literature, in mythology, and in music. They're in our psyches when we think about good and evil, about right and wrong. You're not just gonna let them die like that, are you? My shoulder angel. Don't listen to that guy. He's trying to lead you down the path of righteousness. So what is an angel? The word itself comes from the Latin angelus, meaning messenger. Religions like Christianity and Judaism use the term literally and feature angels as messengers of God. Angels are also referenced as symbols in the battle between forces of good and evil. The earliest appearance of an angel in a piece of art seems to have been found in the third century in Rome and has since shown up in countless forms sculptures, paintings, murals, mosaics, jewelry, prints, comics, the list goes on and on. Angels have represented joy, beauty, and grace. They're these idyllic and divine characters delivering messages of hope, fighting for the good of the world, guarding us from threats, and helping us decide between right and wrong. But are they real? And if so, do they still exist? In a world so full of chaos, uncertainty, clashing ideologies and challenges that leave us unsure of what each day will bring, is it possible that angels still walk among us? Where can we find these modern day angels? Sometimes healthcare providers are called angels. Sometimes children are referred to as angels. We look at people who perform heroic acts of bravery and we're often quick to label them as angels. But do extraordinary acts distinguish everyday humans from angelic ones? A few years ago, a patient of mine told me that although he didn't know what would happen after he died, he would be pleased to send me a sign from the other side if he was able to. We laughed and made a pact that if he could, he would as long as I'd be open to looking out for it. Just don't scare me in the middle of the night, I told him. He laughed. You're such an angel, he'd tell me, as I would sing to him in his hospital bed. I never feel that way. I look at my patients and I think of them as angels. So what happens when angels die? Humans perform tiny and extraordinary acts of bravery selflessness and love, embodying joy, beauty, and grace in many different ways. And each of us has this capacity to hope, to fight for the good of the world, to guard each other from threats, and to navigate what we feel is right and wrong. So who are the angels among us? Are they powerful political figures who have created significant change in the world? Are they healthcare providers who devote themselves to the care and well-being of their patients? Are they everyday people who live everyday lives filled with all of the chaos and uncertainty that makes us human? Whether they stand around us, with us, or beside us, and whether they are alive or have died, maybe they're everywhere, maybe even where we least expect, and maybe their lives and deaths can guide us and teach us in surprising and beautiful ways. Would you like to learn to tango, Donna? Right now? What comes to mind when you think about a tango? It's a sensual dance, intimate, full of passion, accompanied by music played on the accordion. A couple moving in perfect synchronicity, gliding across the dance floor with a rose in the dancer's mouth, and a captive audience watching in astonishment. 
Time and time again, we are shown the same tango cliche on screen that it's almost become a generic movie trope at this point. The last tango you heard is so commonly associated with that scene from True Lies that musicians are often just asked to play the True Lies tango, and many people are shocked that it wasn't written specifically for the movie. In fact, it's a tango called Por Una Cabeza, written by Carlos Gardel from 1935. So where did this passionate and sensual dance come from? The traditional tango originated in the late 19th century in Argentina and Uruguay. The tango dance was heavily influenced by African descendants who had moved to the port towns of these two countries in search of a better life. The music combined elements of African music with influences from European folk music, and the bandonian, a German button accordion, became synonymous with tango music. <laughs> Much of the most popular and loved tango music is part of this tradition. Now, skip ahead to New York City in the 1920s. A young Argentinian teenager named Astor Piazzolla was gifted a bandonian by his father for his birthday. He had hoped that the gift box contained a pair of skates that he so desperately wanted, and was slightly disappointed to find the little button accordion. But soon after, he started playing and quickly became a master of the instrument. Astor Piazzolla moved back to Argentina in the 1930s, and he mastered the craft of the tango, playing in bands and orchestras in the bars and clubs of Buenos Aires. He also had a keen interest in classical music, studying and playing the music of Bach, Stravinsky, Bartok, and other composers. He began to write his own music in a new style, fusing together elements of classical and jazz with the traditional tango, and eventually created an entirely new genre called Nuevo Tango. He referred to his music as tangos for the ears, not necessarily tango for dance. His music would change without warning from the most lyrical music you've ever heard to sharp, angular rhythms in bizarre time signatures. This was virtuosic concert music, and while it displayed the same intensity, sensuality, and passion of a traditional tango, it was something entirely new. Though traditionalists were hesitant to accept this new style, Piazzolla was eventually credited with resurrecting the genre of the tango in Argentina and around the entire world. La Muerte del Ángel, or The Death of an Angel, is part of a series of pieces that Piazzolla wrote about angels. Piazzolla's Death of an Angel was written as an accompaniment to a 1962 play by Alberto Rodriguez Muñoz, Tango del Ángel about an angel who tries to heal broken human spirits in Buenos Aires, but ends up dying in a knife fight. The fight is immediately evident through the unsettling, jagged rhythmic gestures and Piazzolla's fugal writing. Each instrument plays the same melody, but slightly offset, sounding as though they're chasing each other. The middle section features a slower, melancholic, almost nostalgic melody which seems to hint at regret. Toward the end, the fight resumes, leading to the death of the angel, heard so distinctly through the shrieking, sliding notes in the strings 
and the climactic sound building in the piano. When an angel dies, what are we left with? A memory of beautiful gestures, heroic acts of bravery, or cultural and political change? Maybe the angel slips away quietly with hardly a trace, but is remembered by those whom they've touched, those whom they've affected. Perhaps we are surrounded by everyday angels, fighting for us, believing in us, taking care of us. Perhaps, in the midst of extraordinary challenges, we can take comfort in the fact that these everyday angels leave a profound mark on us, no matter how long they are with us. Joining us to perform Piazzolla's La Muerte del Angel is the Juno Award-winning Griffin Trio. For over 25 years, the Griffin Trio has firmly established itself as one of the world's preeminent piano trios, performing works ranging from traditional to contemporary. They have commissioned over 85 new works and frequently collaborate with other artists on projects that push the boundaries of classical music. They're artists in residence at the University of Toronto's Faculty of Music and directors of classical music summer programs at the Banff Center. To find out more about the Griffin Trio and hear more of their recordings, check out the links in the description below. If you're enjoying our episodes here on Pulse, please like this video and subscribe to our channel below. And if you're able to, please support us on Patreon. Now, enjoy The Death of an Angel by Astor Piazzolla. Thank you. 